Hey everyone, so this video is going to be a little bit different from most of my videos where it's uh, those are gameplay based. This video is going to cover the settings that I use. I've been getting a lot of questions about what settings I use and I'd like to be able to show people uh, what you should be setting when you're new to NS2 or if you've been around for a while and you don't really think about the settings. This is what I, I think the optimal settings are for the game. So let's just get right into it. So if you go to options from the main menu, turn on physics multi-threading. You want to be able to see... Um, you know, the best possible performance in heavy combat situations, this allows your CPU to use more cores to run the game so that um, some of the things that could slow it down in a very intense situation are spread onto multiple cores instead of just all on one. Uh, make sure this is turned on. Turn your FOV all the way up to the max. And then in the controls, uh, big thing, turn on team specific sensitivities, life form sensitivities, Set your marine sensitivity to 1 and adjust your DPI on your mouse. Uh, if you can't do that, I would suggest game, getting a gaming mouse. And if you can't get a gaming mouse, then you may need to adjust this according to whatever works for you. But the main idea here is that you want your DPI around 400 to 800. Uh, I use 800, but depends on the mouse. Um, you can see what my hardware is in the description. But basically, by setting it to 1 here... Um, the rest of my things are going to be multipliers, and I'll explain those in a second. But for a Marine, the general rule of thumb is you want to be as low as possible until you can't reasonably turn or turn around or, or react to something that's happening. You don't want to be able to just swing around 360 really easily. If you have your sensitivity too high, then you're going to overshoot when you're tracking life forms. So, for example, when a Fade or a Lurk is moving around, um, or a Skulk, when they're moving around in those random patterns very distinctly difficult to hit. If your sensitivity is too high, a small miscalculation of your movement of your hand is going to overshoot the target and you're going to not be able to hit anything. So um, basically use your accuracy every game to help judge what your DPI should be and adjust accordingly. Uh, but basically as low as possible is better because it means that like more exaggerated mouse movements are less likely to overshoot. So there's more room for error, and it's easier to track onto the target you want. If it's too low, it'll be obvious. It might feel too low to some players that are used to playing with higher sensitivity, but in reality, um, lower is generally better for FPS games, and it's more precise. And what you really want to avoid is being unable to respond. Like, let's say something's biting your left leg, and you and you can't like jump and look down at it, and it, and your mouse is just really dragging. Then you know it's probably too low, but if you find yourself overshooting very easily, which can be hard to distinguish because if you're not quite as good as a Marine, everything's going to feel like I'm, you know, I'm pointing too far or I'm not pointing enough or whatever. But generally speaking, lower is better. A good guideline is around 600, 800, 400 DPI and a one in-game sensitivity. Regardless of what sensitivity you go with, your skulk should be around three or slightly more than three times. Okay what your marine is and this is because as a skulk sometimes you're gonna like run up the wall and then look down at them and drop down on them or you're gonna need to quickly like turn to get into a bend or you may be jumping and running at full speed and then you need to turn like 90 degrees to the right and just bite or you might be behind them really quick when you weren't expecting to and you have to turn up and bite back or something like that and so basically the versatility of the skulk requires that you need um because their movement is much more flexible than a marine you need it to be higher and the nature of it's different. When when you're biting them, you're there's a much bigger hitbox. You're you're right on top of them. There was more room for you to to land a hit, and higher sensitivity doesn't necessarily lead to overshooting unless you're way too high. Your lurk should be around three times your skulk. So fade and skulk are the same. Marine gorge onos the same. Lurk should be about three times higher. And the reason for that is as you're in a fight, you might be in their face, then you want to go up. And then back down, and you want to mess with the ver verticality of like how difficult it is for a marine to look up and then down and aim, you know, in a fight. You might want to be on top of their head and then behind them and then in front of them in a very short sequence of time. And high sensitivity that allows you to do that. The other main thing is that when you're getting in or out of a room to avoid being hit, if you have to make giant mouse movements to move your character as a lurk, you're going to be really easy to hit. Um, unless you're just constantly swinging your arm around, which I don't think is feasible. But if you 
have a higher sensitivity, a smaller movement means a much more erratic flight pattern. So you can move your mouse in random ways without having to move it very far and get the type of mobility you need to be really, really difficult to hit. Uh, the only other thing I'd point out here, okay, so I actually had it, uh, I have these set to one to five. I had it as mouse up, mouse down, and a mouse button, I think, for three. But what I found was that with the new mouse that I have, the scroll wheel isn't it's a little sensitive, so I was switching weapons in fights that I didn't want to. But I do suggest setting a fixed button that isn't WASD to be able to switch weapons uh, because it allows you to move your character a lot more in the middle of combat while also switching um, without having to change, like slow down or change your movement as a result. Uh, the other thing is I move grenades to Q and um, healing to V. Um, and that's just my particular preference there but I would recommend playing around with you know don't have a quick switch that's another thing is like don't have a, a, a previous weapon button because it takes extra number it takes extra buttons to set your previous weapon and then switch back and then constantly change it that's actually just extra things to do and I was doing that for a number of years and someone pointed out to me and then once I stopped doing it I realized it was much better um, next thing here so for my HUD I use NS1 style, and the reason I do that is because of the size of the bars on the side make it easier to see with your peripheral vision. So you don't necessarily have to look at the corner of, the, of your screen in order to get that information. You may be able to see it easier using this style. Um, this is important. Go to damage. Set it to server confirmed. What you want is your client. You don't want your, your own local game to tell you that you got a hit when you didn't get a hit. You want the server to tell you. Otherwise, it's going to it's going to feel like you got um, damage in situations where the game didn't confirm that you didn't. So switch that to server confirmed, and then under map, I set this to 0.25. This allows you to see through the map when you're running around. Really important. And then uh, I think that's it for my for my settings. I don't mess around with a lot with a lot with a crosshair or use a mod for it because my monitor has an overlay, so I just I always have a crosshair on my screen no matter what, so I don't really care. Um this is a big one, graphics. So I turn everything off. I play in 1080p because I want it to be faster. I use a 1080p monitor. You can look at what I use in the in the description. It's one of the fastest monitors in the world. It's you know I have a really good CPU. I have a 16 core latest generation AMD Ryzen CPU. DDR5 memory, good frequency, and I have uh, 6800 XT, which is one of the fastest graphics cards for rasterization, except for maybe the new 4000 NVIDIA and the new 7000 AMD. But up until a few months ago, it was literally one of the fastest CPU, uh, GPUs you can get for rasterization, which this game obviously doesn't use ray tracing. And, um, and in 1080p, Put it this way, the, the higher the number of frames and the faster your monitor and the faster your system is overall, the less input delay there is and the easier it is to hit targets that are moving and changing directions a lot. It's smoother and easier and that's why I'd recommend just going with the fastest possible setup and don't worry about the eye candy as much. I mean, these settings, turning them up and off, on and off doesn't change it enough for me to make it feel like it looks good enough to trade the competitive advantage I get. So... Uh, I play in full screen, no limit to the memory. I turn everything minimal or off, especially this one here, Infestation. When you first get the game, it's going to be set to rich, and you're going to see these bubbles all over the floor. It looks cool, but in reality, it just makes it harder to find the cysts because sometimes the cysts are inside the bubbles, and what you really want to do is like focus on killing the cysts, so it's just graphically nice, but gameplay, it's better to just remove it. Um, and another really critical one is vertical sync don't turn that on unless you absolutely have to if you had like screen tearing and it's just unbearable fine but uh ideally you'd be using the free sync or g-sync monitor and or even without it you'd use at least 144 hertz and even if you're on 60 hertz don't turn this on really if you unless you have to but basically this adds an input delay all of these settings are meant to reduce any performance barriers not that it's absolutely necessary. You could turn these all on and the game would run smoothly for most modern computers. But the question really becomes like, do you want it to be as easy as possible to um, 
kill those fast moving phase lurks and skulks or do you want it to be you know look slightly better and maybe have more input delay and and this in my opinion isn't the type of game that you go just for the looks it's more about uh, making it as easy as possible to succeed in the game one thing I should mention as well set your FOV this is really important set your FOV to 20 you max it out um, and then the other thing is if you go to the the workshop the steam workshop and you subscribe um, I do have a video on it's called Wraith's Alien Vision but he since changed it so I reverted and uh, reverted it and made made my own um, but basically uh, I would recommend using this alien vision so all you need to do is go into the steam workshop search natural selection 2 and look for my alien vision subscribe to it and then come into the game in the main menu go to mods set this to active and hit restart and this is this alien vision in that video that I put out it describes why I think it's amazing and I would strongly recommend that. Um, there's one other thing. If you're a newer player and you don't know this, the there's a volume slider here. Sometimes in game you'll notice that you're you can hear people's voices, but the audio has gone away. It's a rare bug, but it does happen from time to time. Just adjust this slider and it'll fix it. Um, same thing. If your microphone doesn't work, just switch to a different one and then switch back. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it as far as settings go. Uh, I would strongly recommend uh, using these settings and trying it out for a while. Go through each of your settings, set it this way, and see what happens. All right, hope you guys enjoy the video.